numbers in the chess category. So as long as everything's set up properly and everyone configures properly, then we're good to go ahead and start. Sweet. So, okay. Yeah, my chat's saying that the audio's fine on our end. Okay. So. Uh, so. Someone said it's good here online, so I think we're good to go. Uh, so you're the chess expert. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, introduce. So from my stream, uh, this is Vampire Chicken. He is a chess instructor. He's going to be teaching me chess today. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess you can just introduce me. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm very excited. Yeah, Klausius here. He's going to be uh, our big Go expert a little bit later, so it's going to be fun. I know Klausius has actually been playing a little bit on Lee Chess, so uh, yeah, I'm going to be looking up. I'm looking at your uh, stats right now. So yeah, he got all the way up to 1136. I think when he started, you know, he was below a thousand or something, or at least around a thousand. He's been playing a lot of rapid games. It looks like so. Um, I think it'll be really interesting to see. I think we should play a couple games together, and I think if we just play one or two games, I'll kind of know where you are. We can play a nice, really slow game. Um, and, yeah, this will be just kind of a, a nice little chess lesson, and we'll see how it works out. Hopefully it goes well. Um, so I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to turn my alerts off, actually, too, so that people don't hear all these chickens and everything. Sweet. So what time control has been comfortable for you? Sweet. Okay. Yeah, we'll do 15 plus 10, but we can always, we can add time too. Uh, I'm going to do something very unusual for me. I'm going to make it a casual game. But... Uh, in your chat, I'm very quiet on Okay. So you guys have a hard time hearing him? Is that what it is? So let's see. Sure. So let's see. Yeah, I've cranked you up there. I've cranked you up here. Um, yeah, so go ahead and talk, and we'll see if everything's all right okay. then. 2 plus 2 is 4. All four right. 4 plus 4 is 8. <laughs> Can you hear me? Do I sound great? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great to me. Boo! <laughs> all right. Oh, thanks, C.L. Smith. All right, so oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah, I think he... Was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so whenever you are ready, yeah, we can... Ready. Uh, yeah, so make your first move, and we'll go nice and slow. Um, I'm definitely happy to talk about the openings here. Um, so I'm assuming at your level what you've seen most often is the move pawn to e5. This is probably, um, which I'm just going to play, because I think this is what, at the very beginning, uh, what most people will be playing. I'm going to crank you up a little bit louder for, for the people here. Um, okay, so you play knight to c3. Which is very interesting. It's it's nothing wrong with this move. Most people do prefer uh, knight to f3. So if you are looking at my screen, you'll be able to see my arrows and everything. But uh, most people are going to play knight to f3 because it does attack that e pawn. Um, knight to c3 is interesting. Sometimes people follow it up. I don't know if you're a very aggressive guy that's going to play f4 next and really attack my center or what you're up to. So I'm just going to play a nice normal move. I'm going to play knight to f6, develop my stuff. Nope, I just get both my knights out, and I just didn't know the order mattered. <laughs> Sweet. So, yeah, so most often this will lead, um, this is one of just, I mean, most people, they hit upon this opening. Uh, so it's not always necessarily a plus to have this knight on c3. And one of the reasons is, now I'm going to play knight to c6. This is the four knights, which is totally fine. But you did mention at one point that you like bishop to c4 here. But there is a little trap <laughs> if bishop to c4, there is a little fork trick that, that might happen. So, now I'm scared to play it. Right, yeah, so bishop to c4, there is, there's definitely a little trick, which... Um, okay, I will just learn the trick. Okay, so yeah, if you play bishop c4, which is obviously the natural move, you want to put the bishop on this diagonal, where you have pressure on my f-pawn, um, which is one of the, the biggest weaknesses in my camp. But it allows this little trick, knight takes e4. So the point okay. is, if you take back with a knight, which is not the only move, but if you take back with a knight, I will play d5. And now I'm going to get one of my pieces back, and I've opened up my position, so now both of my bishops are already looking very good. So it's not the end of the game or anything, but I definitely have a, a fine position already. And now it's a fork, and I mm -hmm. take. So yeah, you can take, or you can retreat and protect your knight. Those are the two main options here. What if here. I take, your queen will get me. Correct, and my queen actually will be doing okay in the center. 
So yeah. What if I go here? Okay, so yeah, this looks, this actually does look pretty interesting. So I'm down a piece, so I do have to take this knight. Okay, so you take back, so I... Okay, again, I'm in check, so I have to take your bishop. Okay, and then I go here. Yeah, so now you're in my territory with your knight, and I'm looking around, and what I'm trying to find is, is there a way that I can actually trap your knight? Um, I've also spotted a double attack. I can play the move queen to g5. There should be some sort of issue with your knight being in here this early on. Um, so queen g5 looks like a pretty strong move to me. I could also just kind of centralize, play queen to d5. Um, a lot of ways of potentially attacking this knight. So I think I'm just going to play pretty aggressive. I'm going to play queen to g5, attacking your knight and the g-pawn. And I don't think you're going to be able to save them both. So hopefully I'm already asking you some tough questions. Okay, 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 okay. So first, mm -hmm. I, I, I tried to write my own classy approach, which was where am I weak, where can mm -hmm. I be captured, and then where can you be captured and stuff. That was... That's what yeah. I'm trying to me learn how to learn how to play this game. Right, so, and that's yeah, that's definitely at the beginning. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be about developing board vision, <laughs> which is basically where your pieces are and what is attacked and what's not. So you're attacking, for example, my C pawn. I'm attacking your G pawn, and I'm attacking your knight with my queen. Um, but yeah, this just that's a very good idea. You're trying to just keep track of <laughs> what is attacked and, and what isn't. So that's definitely kind okay. of the right way to think so, about it. I, so I'm going to walk through my thinking so you can tell me sure. if I'm wrong. Uh, so the first idea is I want to defend my knight with a pawn. Sure, yeah, but pawn to d4. Pawn Passante, I think. So I do pawn to d4, I get on Passante, I think that's how, what it's called. Mm -hmm. Then I can take that pawn with my queen, so it's technically an even trade, and then my bishop would poke in your queen. However, that does leave my king floating, which is a little bit annoying. Right, so, so if you... I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of how I can defend that knight with another piece but that is also protected by something else or if i just need to run the knight away that's my thought process yeah so there's usually three ways of dealing with it if your thing gets attacked uh one is block which is not an option here you're not going to be able to block my queen from doing it but the two main ones that are it's always going to be either move away or defend it so yeah d4 definitely is a very strong candidate move you push the pawn two squares it defends the knight and it attacks my queen so i don't even have time for on passant because if i on passant i'm going to lose my queen um, so for that reason, oh, really? it does look, yeah, so it looks like a, a pretty good candidate move. Oh yeah, because of the bishop. Yeah. It, because of the bishop. I forgot to, I forgot to take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. And then the other options of running away, you could, for example, take on c6, because that at least takes a pawn. Your knight still is kind of hanging in my territory, so it's, it's a bit risky. Or, you know, you can I'm go to c4. I'm but... considering b6 over the, uh, d4, simply mm -hmm. because I like counterattacking more than I like defending. Sure. But, of course, I don't know if there's a preference or a better one. Yeah, so I'm looking around, too. I'm looking for if you take on c6, will I have some immediate trick or whatever. But most likely, whatever you do, I'm going to take your g-pawn next. Because that's going to attack your rook, kind of force you to move your rook away. And I'm going to be able to oh, get... Oh, yeah. There is that g-pawn. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> there's a g-pawn problem. Yeah. And then there's going to be some more problems, and it's going to kind of be game over pretty soon here. <laughs> but... The but, game's yeah. over pretty soon. I'm like, I thought I was up a pod. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, your knight came in a little bit early. This this is this fork trick, and we'll, we'll definitely be able to analyze this a little bit later. But yeah, so I'm taking here, which attacks your rook, and it also makes a very sly threat that hopefully I get to play on the next move. Um. <laughs> so I want to... Okay, so my rook is in trouble. So mm -hmm. I'm going to defend the rook while also defending... So I think just moving my king up is good. Ah, so yeah. Everything. This I didn't consider, but it actually aligns um, your king and queen on the same diagonal. So a huge part of finding tactics is alignment, like just the alignment of the pieces. So when you go here, I do just notice right away, you're on the same diagonal, and I have this bishop. So. Oh, bishops! I forgot those. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is already huge trouble now. Um, <laughs> I was thinking if you uh, if you try to um, I forget what it's called do this to my do this with your queen mm -hmm. I could just move my queen king out and then if you took my queen I would get it with the rook mm -hmm. I forgot about the bishops right <laughs> yep snuck in there I, with I the bishops I always forget the bishops 
Yeah, and it's definitely difficult because, you know, I got 16 things at the start. You got 16. There's 32 things on the board, and so keeping track of all of them all at once is uh, is very, very difficult. And, yeah, I'm feeling kind of mean. So I can go here. It allows d4. Uh, so I'm looking at the move uh, bishop to c5 because it's check, develops a thing. Obviously, just taking your queen is going to be enough. But uh, I'm trying to be mean, see if I can find a quick checkmate. But bishop c5, maybe you just have d4 there. Um I'm just going to take your queen. This is the keep it simple approach. I'm going to take your queen. And now I can get your king running many different ways. Um, obviously, queen f3 check will attack your king and your rook, make you run away. Um, I'm going to throw this check in. See if we can just hunt down the king. Okay. I know trading is normally not good, but I think just running is bad. All right, so I'm just going to keep hunting. So, yeah, you're going to have to make a lot of uncomfortable moves that you don't really want to play. Um, here attacking your rook again so um, okay so you're running around all right i'm just gonna grab this rook Yeah, I mean the game is <laughs> the game's gonna be over here pretty quick. Okay. I just I don't, I don't know what to do. Yeah, there's not much more commentary now. <laughs> I'm just gonna castle. Okay. Check. check. I, I've been doing the, I've been doing these problems. Yeah. That can trap you in the corner, and I'm trying to see if I can do it or not. Right. I don't think I can do it without a rook, though. Yeah. Now with rope. just a, the bishop and the knight, they can mate, but my king is actually very safe now because uh, I guess one of the targets is my g pawn. If you really wanted to, you know, your bishop and knight could try to attack my g pawn, but I'll always be able to play f6. So you're never really going to be able to make any threats against my king here. I'm very safe. <laughs> right then, you know. Then obviously, <laughs> when you're playing and you're playing other people that are 1100, just never resign this because you'd be you'd be very surprised um, at how oh, often they actually mess queen. it up. Yeah, I'm gonna run and get another queen. Right, so yeah, if I if I do this right too, I'm just never ever going to even give you chances, so that's also kind of important, like when I am winning like this, I'm always still looking at what your resources are and how I'm going to like counter them, um, just to try to make sure that you don't get anything close to having, you know, chances of winning the game. Um, let me ask your knight to move. I could obviously make a queen and just win some material that way, but I'm going to try to get these, I'm going to try to get these rooks in the game here. Might be able to just checkmate you with what I got. Otherwise, backup plan, make a queen and win some material. Uh... <laughs> so I'm supposed to go to the center. Okay. Okay, let me get this queen active. With the queen and a couple rooks. I should be able to hunt you down here. A fork! So, man, you attacked all my stuff. Very good. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but hey, it's a good tactic. <laughs> you 
You check me. You take my rooks. Sorry. If I check, you move there, and mm -hmm. I don't have anything else because it would be on a white square. Correct. Yeah, I'm just I'm up way too much stuff now. Uh, oh, I should have chosen the other one. Oh, well, it didn't matter. I would have got captured anyway. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Should I resign? Uh, well, I've finally <laughs> seen a mating pattern. <laughs> it's been taking me this long. I've kind of been a bit lazy with this. There's probably a lot that I missed as well, but uh, I finally spotted a mating pattern. So I believe I'll, I'll be mating here in a couple moves. But yeah, yeah. If you do want to, we should be able to uh, analyze the game. I think if I actually make a study, that we can, you can actually see on your screen what I'm doing. I haven't tested that either, but it's worth a try, um, unless it's easy enough for you and your viewers to see what I'm doing on my screen. But here's the mating pattern that I found: the, the nice little rook and queen <laughs> checkmate there. Um, Thank you for the game. <laughs> do you want me to put this in a study so you can, you guys can all see it on your screen? Yeah. Let's good. see. So let me first grab this PGN here, and then hopefully we're able to analyze it a little bit because you kind of you let this trick happen, but you did it on purpose. So hit the hamburger buttons is what I'm being told. is harder than setting up a discord call the hamburger menu in the analysis board study create study my studies classy games boom oh and i just put it right in there okay so here is the uh here's the link so anyone can go there and look i'm actually going to if i make a move now does it actually let you does it show up on your screen Seven pawn going upwards. So yeah. So do you see when I'm making moves? Like do you see that I'm moving yeah. pieces? Yeah. Okay. I can follow it. Sweet. So, um, sorry. So yeah. So here you played here, and then so again, the most common move here is actually knight to f3. So this is kind of if you want to look at this in the future, this might be the way that you want to go. And there's going to be like three main moves. I mean, most people though are going to play knight to c6 in this position. Um, a lot of beginning players are going to play d6, which is just simply not that great, because then you're blocking in your bishop here. Okay. But you're going to face that move a lot, so for that reason, it's kind of a good opening to play. And the other one is the Petrov. It's this weird counter-attacking. <laughs> you're attacking their pawn, they're attacking your pawn. So uh, I'm perfectly happy to go into any one of these if you're interested in this opening. But yeah, the point is, after here, now you can develop a bishop without this knight on c3. And c3 is a very normal square for a knight, but it does allow this trick. So I do want to just jump back to the game to kind of highlight the uh, the one trick in the four knights, where we bring out all four knights, and you put this guy here, is um, you can play knight takes e4. And if you, I, I guess you probably, I don't know how much experience you have, have you used a like a database or do you analyze your games after you play them? Uh, not yet. I just got showed two days ago how I can review a game. So, okay. I haven't been able to do it yet, but I, should, yeah. I got shown that there's an AI on here. That's cool. Right, yeah, so at any point, I can turn this on. I can hit this engine on, and it's going to say 0.00, .00 meaning it's, like, exactly equal at this point after knight takes e4. Um, but, yeah, it's worth just kind of poking around, seeing what, uh, checking things with engines, and checking the database, because it's going to tell you what the most popular moves are. But here's how this fun trick works. After knight takes e4... And after you take back, which seems to be the most sensible move, uh, I'm going to play d5. Now, some people, though, they see this trick coming. So here I'm just simply going to get my piece back. And my bishops are just so happy. They get to come out. They spring into the game. And, you know, they should be doing pretty well here. Um, a lot of people will see this coming, and they play an even worse move. So after knight takes e4, they take on f7 because it looks good. You know, if you're going to have to lose it anyway, it looks like a good idea to possibly give up this bishop for this pawn, you know, because now my king is a little bit exposed. But the problem is, after knight takes e4, I simply get the center. I play the move d5, and I get this huge center. And a lot of people, they see this from a distance, and it does look a little bit scary for black, but it's actually not that big of a deal. It's better to actually have the center in this exact position. 
then, uh, because white doesn't have a big follow-up, my next moves are going to be just h6, kicking your knight away. I'm going to be able to develop my bishops somewhere safe, tuck my king away in the corner, bring the rook in, and kind of castle manually, and just have a big center. So this is actually just known to be good for black. Um, if you're playing this against other beginners, you, you probably get away with this all day long. It's going to be a while before people start playing knight takes e4. But it's obviously, it's good to know and have on the radar. And this just doesn't work if there's not a knight on c3. So if, for example, we had played this move order a little bit different, and on move 2, you play knight f3, and I follow up with knight c3. After bishop c4, knight f6, there's no longer this threat at all. Um, so say you just, like, uh, you know, play d3. I mean, this is probably the simplest as d3. Then there's just simply no threats here. You're going to be able to get all your pieces out and just have a normal game from here. So. Okay, so don't move the bishop before moving the knight. Yeah, does that all... <laughs> Is yeah, that conclusion? <laughs> it's it's just this one exact exact position where there's this knight fork trick, and it happens all the time in these beginner games where yeah, all of a sudden I can take here, and you allow this trick, and it's not the end of the world, but it just makes Black's game really easy. Gotcha. So, uh, would you like to play again? But maybe we can we can switch colors, or we can stay the same, and you can try a new opening as white. However, you want to do it. So if I move the knight first, and you move a piece, does that mean I can move the bishop out then, or do I have to move a pawn? Yeah, so let's get this, I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to be black again. Okay. And then, yeah, we can get it on the on the board here. Okay, and so I'm supposed to go here. Yep. So now I'll play e5, just like in the previous and game. And I attack first. Boom. Right, so now I have to deal with this in some way. You are now attacking my pawn, so I'm going to have to defend, defend my pawn. i got to do something about it. I could counterattack, but that's not as common. Um, so I'm going to play the main move, which is knight to c6, because I want to develop my stuff. I protect my pawn. And now, yeah, you can bring your, your bishop out. Okay, so I bring my bishop out now, not mm -hmm. knight? Yep. Okay, so I bring my bishop out. Boom. And someone said develop knights before bishop is a saying in chess, not always true, but often. It's, yeah, it's very true. So, like, when you don't know, sometimes the reason for the rule is um, knights have very limited amounts of squares they can go to. Like, f3, like, where you put your first knight, you put your knight on f3, that's almost always going to be the correct square. Whereas this bishop, you put it on c4, which is obviously a good move here, but it also could have gone to b5, where it puts pressure on my knight. So there's just a little bit less certainty. Bishops usually... You know, the best square for the bishop might be two or three different squares on the board. Whereas the knights almost always go to f3 and c3. There's just not a lot of other squares. So, like, the knight that I have that still I haven't moved yet is almost always going to go to f6. And so now my what I'm debating in my head is, should I play knight f6, um, which is, like, the normal move? The other main move would be to develop my bishop. But let me stick with the maxim here, and I will develop my knight to f6. And now you actually have... A lot of uh, a lot of choices, but we'll see what you're gonna do. Uh, I think the, the normal one is if I'm do, doing the bishops, then I would move my pawn right here, right? Boom! So this is a great move, and uh, I think even Magnus Carlsen, the world champ, he really likes d3. So there's there's actually a ton of options for white <laughs> that we can get into that are a lot more aggressive, but I think this is definitely going to be the absolute simplest to learn. And from here. Um, Black will usually choose, I can go to e7 and stay kind of close to my king, or I can get out and see the world with bishop to c5. So let me try to think about what direction we're going to go. But let me just play kind of the normal way. Bishop to c5. I'm trying to get my my bishop out, and I'm going to play d6. Okay. And then... So now I should castle? Yes, so castling is a great move. And so part of this position, I'm probably going to castle here in just a minute, but part of the position is one of the moves that I want to play as black is a move like knight to a5 and trying to trap your c4 bishop. So there's a couple things. There's a maneuver you kind of need to know, and you need to know black's kind of strategic idea. I want to go win that bishop. So, But if I move my knight to the side on a5, I'm going to be hanging my e-pawn. So sometimes, I mean, possibly the better move is to play d6. Like, so if I support my pawn, then I'm all of a sudden going to be trying to go and get your bishop. Because your bishop on c4 is awesome. It's outside the pawn chain. It's attacking my f-pawn. So part of it is going to be, 
I want to get your bishop. So you want to be ready for that and you want to be having an escape square for that bishop at some point. The other maneuvers that white wants to have in mind in this position is you're trying to play moves in the center. You're trying to play moves like potentially c3 and later d4. Hopefully you can you can spot both of those. So you're actually knight will not usually go to c3. Usually you're going to put a pawn there so that eventually you can play d4, get a huge center sometime later in the future. And <laughs> the th yeah, go ahead. I thought if you could go c3 without consequence, then it's better than d4 or or sorry d2 or e2. If you could go c3 without consequence, it's better than. Say it one more time. Or e2. I thought if the, if the knights can get out to those squares mm -hmm. in the center, it's better than d2 or e2. And I know it's not always true, but I thought if you could. You right. Should. Yeah. So this is one of the exceptions. Um, so this line is definitely going to be one of the exceptions. And the reason is there's what I like to call the Rui Lopez maneuver. You don't really need to know what it is, what, why, <laughs> why it's called that. But your ideas are rook to e1, which not only defends your central e-pawn, but you're vacating that f1 square for a knight. So if you look at your knight on b1, because this is kind of the guy in question, we're trying to figure out where this guy goes. You actually, if you're trying to checkmate me, because I'm going to castle on the king side, you want to get it all the way over to f5. <laughs> so if you can believe it or not, uh, just looking at that guy, if you could pick him up, drop him on f5, you would actually have a huge attack. So can you see how it's going to take you, you know, one, two, three. I see two moves. Four moves to get there. How many moves? It's going to so take you four moves to get there. So this is like a slow it. opening. To get to G5 or F5? F5. Yeah, can you get your knight from B1 all the way to F5? Okay. Well, Putting the rook on E1 first is the hint. That way you have the F1 square. The rook to E1? Yeah, so imagine oh, one of your... Oh, and then it can move the knight B2 to F1 to G3 to F5. Boom. There it is. Yep, that's the main maneuver. <laughs> so it's really long-winded. Well, it's elaborate. Back. But uh, yeah, when you Why get that knight, a knight be good at F5? once you get all the way to f5, then you're you're suddenly looking at my king side. For example, you're already thinking of sacrifices on g7. Like I'm going to be castled and everything, but if you can sometimes get another piece attacking g7, like maybe a queen, maybe a queen sneaks in to f3 to g3. You know, it's going to be this like elaborate, long attacking plan. But it was even Kasparov that said a knight on f5 is worth like a rook because <laughs> it's like such a strong attacking piece. And when you kind of get into it and when we get there, I'm just going to castle now. Um, then why can't I move the f3 knight to h4 and get that to f5? Um, so here there's usually a tactical problem with it. So when you move to h4, now if you look at the alignment, my queen is on the same diagonal as your knight. So I, I have this tactic where I can move my knight on f6 and take your e-pawn. That's usually the problem with it. Okay. <laughs> so it's a tactical problem. And, and yeah, just the more pieces, too, you're going to actually try to bring, like, all your pieces over. And uh, we'll kind of go through it slow here so that we can, <laughs> okay. so we can I get can there move... together. I can move my knight to d2 because it defends two pieces. Mm -hmm. And my bishop would be blocked, but I can put my bishop on b2 soon to activate it again, and then it's okay? Yeah, so you will block it at some point either now. I assume either rookie one or some other move might be the normal way, but we'll get there somehow, some way. So I'm going to play a tricky move, though, because it's we're going to keep in mind what my one of my strategic ideas is. I'm going to defend my e-pawn. So now my knight is no longer tied down to my e-pawn. So my idea is I'm going to go and play knight to a5, and I'm going to try to get your bishop. So there's two main ways of saving your bishop in this position that most people well, will try. My plan was just to move a pawn to b3 so I can activate my bishop next turn. Ooh, pawn to b3, you're kind of trapping your light-squared bishop in there. He might actually get into a lot of trouble. I will. So if, if you put pawn on b3... Yeah. Oh, I can't go backwards. Yeah, and so but normally... I, I thought my two pawn is... Yeah, so you start thinking about how are you going to deal with the fact that I'm going to attack your bishop and try to take him. There's actually two different pawn moves on that side of the board that will be able to help you save your bishop on the next move. Mm. I don't know 
to do. <laughs> if I can't, I don't know what to do. So you need to create a retreating square. So there's not a retreat yet, but you can make one. And so the two main ways are A4, which is probably the most popular way of doing it. And uh, A4 is just it's simple, because now if I attack you and I play knight A5, you're, you can just go back all the way to A2. So that's one simple way. A, a more complicated way that I also kind of like is playing C3, which has some ideas of, <laughs> if I attack you, running around with the bishop. But yeah, A4 is the most popular way to go, so definitely a good move. And now it doesn't make any sense for me to go to the side and attack you, because you're just going to run away. So yeah, you've dealt with that threat pretty well. And yeah, now I'm going to need to make some big decisions here about what I want to do. Um, I think I'm going to start maneuvering my knights around. And I think I'm looking at my knight on c6, and I kind of want to go to f4 for the same idea that you want to go to f5. So I'm going to play the move knight to e7. And so I actually think, I'm thinking two to myself. I think actually knight to d2 probably is wrong because you can't play d4 in this position. So this is a more advanced idea. Uh, probably if you had rook on e1, I wouldn't be able to play this way because you'd be able to play d4 right away. But that's a little bit more advanced. Now you said having a knight on f5 was good, right? Yes. So that's where your knight on d2 is definitely heading over to f5. But since you blocked your queen, why can't I go to h4 now? Uh, yeah, you actually, you can. I have f5 under under control for now. I mean, you can give it a try. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. This knight also had some influence on the center, so I'm wondering if I can start now playing like c6 and d5. Maybe I can play d5 in one go, but I will try to be ambitious. I want to somehow, you know, when I look at this, it doesn't seem that natural to me. Um... So my first thought is either to play d5 or just to prepare it with the move c6. And my idea is to play d5 next. Okay, so you moved up. Does that affect me right now? <laughs> I don't think so. So yeah, if you go to the side, then I should try to play in the center. So I'm trying to meet your flank attack with some play in the center. And I, I currently have f5 under control. I'm, at, I'm controlling it twice. So if your knight jumps in there, I'll win a pun. Alright, so I'm going to go here, because I think that's okay. about to open up if I trade. Right. So yeah, this seems yeah very logical, because now maybe you can get your knight here. Um, calculating how mean I want to be. Um, it's also a very good move, because now if I play d5, I have to reckon with the fact that if you play e takes d5, if you take my pawn there in the center, your rook is aligned with my e pawn. So I have to kind of take that under under account. Um, assume we move like knight g4 is very good for me. Um, actually, maybe I do have a lot of ways of attacking that pawn. Okay. Yeah, time to be mean. Let's hop in here. Let's attack your f pawn for a second time. Here because you said that was a powerful move. Okay, this actually is an interesting time to do it. So I did attack your F pawn and you didn't actually respond to that. Well, isn't my king defending that? Yes, but I attacked it twice. So I have a knight and a bishop. Oh, I didn't see the bishop. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's only a matter of which is stronger. I'm just simply going to take with my knight, though. And this should be bad news for you. Because now I have a discovered attack. I can move my knight anywhere, like hopefully taking your queen. Um, and if you save your queen, I still get to move my knight anywhere with check, and your knight but on f5 is hanging. Now, right? Okay, so very good move. Yeah, very good move. I'll have to take it back. So you kind of solved that one problem, but <laughs> the biggest problem is the discovered attack here. There's a discovered... Oh, because uh, you can... Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're... So yeah, my next move, knight goes anywhere, and it's going to be check. So hopefully I get to grab um, that'll something. Give you, that'll give you a fork on my rook. Mm -hmm. But what if I do something else? Uh, damn it. 
<laughs> well, if you don't move the queen, I take the queen. So. Well, uh, let's go here. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm a cruel guy. I'm looking at the move bishop to g4, and wondering, I'm wondering if your queen's trapped. It looks like it. So yeah, I could obviously. Most people are gonna move this knight, right? They're gonna move this knight. It's gonna be check. They're gonna take your rook. I'm even more cruel. I want a queen. So <laughs> this is suddenly kind of falling apart. Eek! You took me. All right, I'll take you back. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted to, how I wanted it to go down. <laughs> right, yeah. So it was... And these positions are really, really hard. Like, if you're playing a good player and you play just a little bit too slow in the opening, the other player is going to take over. Um, it's just going to be the way that it works. So I definitely want to show this afterward but then maybe we can switch and i can you know play it from the white side or something and then another thing that might be more fair and also enjoyable um would be if oh this isn't gonna be a smothered mate no oh discovered that yeah but oh i have to I thought I had something here that I don't have. How embarrassing. All right, let's go back. <laughs> I'll bring my rook in. <laughs> Your rook is defended, so I have to take that into account. So let's go back here. You know, if you make a mistake, you just apologize. You go back, and you start afresh. So now I it looks... Take, you take at the discovery attack. I can't do that. So I have to go... Ah, okay. So I'll take that one. Oh, wait. I didn't change it. All right. And yeah, hopefully like, now I have a big threat. Mistakes are made. And yeah, I mean, it's it's surprising how fast it can go downhill one little mistake. <laughs> ah, you defended against the checkmate. I'm just trying to give my king more escape routes. Yeah, it's a very good idea. So that's actually, yeah, that's the correct idea. Uh, can I play here? If I was really mean, I'd say something like, oh no, my bishop! But that'd be mean. That would be mean. I obviously saw it. Well, if I take your bishop, then you'll just take the pawn, and then I don't really... I don't know. If I take your bishop, you don't even have to take the pawn. We can just move your queen down to h1. Is that yep. checkmate? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm trying to be sneaky. Yeah, I don't want to take it. Though. Correct. Yeah, if you take it, you get checkmated. You were correct. So, yeah. Very good. You're actually you're pretty good at tactics. So. It feels like a lot know. of... I don't feel very good right now. <laughs> I, mean, for the, I mean, I'm being honest. For the rating, it's it's strategic stuff that I think is probably where you're weaker at, just knowing where to put your pieces. But that's, you know, you, you just don't get that until you've played millions of games or whatever. Um, but you actually, you do have some more tactical awareness than I think a lot of people uh, for the rating that I would expect, so. Which is good. Um, I think I'm gonna lose. Hmm. Well, I'm, Here I think my I'm mate. about to lose. I know I'm, go I know I'm going to lose, but I think I'm about to lose is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't see main one here, which is upsetting.
hanging in there. And a lot of ways to win material. Is this force mate? Yeah, this force is mate, right? Okay. Because, yeah, looks like the has to take, and then I'll have a checkmate here. Oh, that's blocking that's Bishop, 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 so hopefully if you go back to the study, hopefully you can see and I can make the, the moves on the board. So yeah, just let me know when you're over there on the study because I want to look at this one as well. I do have it up. I'm watching your knight arrow thingy move. Sweet. Uh, so you can see when yeah. I move the pieces? Yep. Sweet. So yeah, this is your first attempt at knight to f3 on move 2. So <laughs> understandably, it's it's a rocky road. But yeah, bishop to c4 is definitely one of the moves that I, I recommend, especially at the beginner level, because... It's easy to kind of play the way that we played in the sense that, I mean, no opening is like truly easy. You're going to have to like, every opening is different and unique and you have to get a lot of practice with it. But it gives you the ability later on to transpose to a lot of the tricky lines as you, you know, grow and develop as a chess player. The most popular move here is actually bishop to b5. This is what most of like the professionals are going to play, but this is a very I good move. I thought that wasn't good because you're not supposed to help your def uh, opponent develop a pawn. Um, so yeah, you're thinking about like if they take, like for example, if here... Um, you wouldn't want to just take right away. You'd want to either... Well, I meant if they played a6. Um, yeah, so if a6, which is actually the main move, um, most people are going to just keep this bishop. So, yeah. Well, I thought you weren't supposed to touch twice. You weren't supposed to move the same piece twice? Yeah. I don't uh, know. The, yeah, I'm here it's fine. I mean, because they, if they attack you, you better move it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I just thought that's the reason you don't do it, because not only did you have to touch it twice, you helped a pawn mm -hmm. move out. Yeah, and this is definitely, this is the oldest opening in all of chess. This is, like, the most studied. So it's also, therefore, the most nuanced. And, yeah, at all these level, these openings, you're going to break these rules, like, constantly. Um, the rules are really just guidelines. Like, in general, you don't want to. Like, if unprovoked, if I do, like, nothing, you wouldn't want to now move this guy again and go to, like, C4. That kind of, like, making a second move wouldn't make any sense. If you wanted to go to C4, you should have just gone there in one gotcha. move. Gotcha. Um, so that's like the kind of the reasoning for it. <laughs> well, um, that's counterintuitive. <laughs> right, like yeah. The guideline, the, here's the guidelines, but every opening breaks at least one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I assume it's the same in Go. I have no idea. But I assume there's like general basics. <laughs> you should do this. But here's a million exceptions. I don't know if Go is like that or if that's like well, just specific. Yeah, de uh, it probably at the higher level, it's definitely true. At the lower level, yeah. it's definitely not. Uh, at the okay. lower level, the the better your theories, the better your position will be. Interesting. But the higher levels, it's like, yeah, you can break this rule, but only because this variation exists. And huh. so I, I, I yeah. know in chess you call it calculating. So it's mm -hmm. probably why you defy it so much in the opening, because the opening, uh, everyone's calculated it so much. Right. That it's like, oh, yeah, like, of course these theories exist, but because of this exact variation, we don't do it. Right. So. Which I guess is the same thing. Yeah. So all that being said. Bishop to c4 is, like, simpler and more, you know, intuitive <laughs> at the beginning. And then, yes, people either... They play bishop to c5 because it, it avoids a lot of the sharp, complicated lines. But knight to f6 is definitely the most logical move. So that's mm. why I played it. And then you played a great move. You played d3, which is actually, if you can see the database over here, played over 8,000 times, and there's a lot of other sharp moves. Um, knight to g5 <laughs> is the one that's the sharpest and the most interesting. So it will be worth just kind of going through this just so you can see it because there's a lot of interesting tactics in this one already. So uh, we have this database here, so I guess you can look. To, how did but, they respond to that? Right, so... so <laughs> and this is what I did to you in our game. I used my knight and my bishop, and I attacked your F-pawn. So that this, was so mean. Yeah, so this is going <laughs> to happen all the time. Um, so how do you actually stop it? And you, can, you can look at the database and cheat, but if you... Uh, well, let's see. You're about to set up a fork. Normally, you'd want to kick it out, but there's no way to kick it out. You can't move the pawn out of the way, so you'd want to be able to capture. So, queen e2 or e7? So, queen e7 is what a lot of people try here, but it actually doesn't quite work because the, the bishop and the knight are so much weaker. For example, here, I can just take now, 
and you're not gonna you're not gonna uh, want to trade a queen yeah. for two minor <laughs> pieces because she's worth nine. These guys are only worth six put together. And, and if you move your king, that's yeah, it gets worse four. because then they go here and they threaten a fork. <laughs> so yeah. it gets worse and worse and worse if you allow this. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what a lot of people they they try in this position when they see it for the first it says time. D five. D five. Excellent. Right. So this is this could be a a sacrifice. Let's walk through it slowly. They take with a pawn, attacks the knight, and so the what's the most logical move? I think the move that everybody would play here is actually a mistake. Well, you can't take with the queen, right? Right. So you take with the queen loses a queen. Yeah. So you can't do that. Um, I see you're you're just moving the knight out of the way, but you could also move it to d4. Yep. So these are both moves. Uh, I was kind of trying to hope to goad you into saying the most obvious move is knight takes d5 because you just recapture back. Well, wouldn't the bishop get it then? So if the bishop takes, then the queen will take back. So this is actually great for black. Um, oh. The queen also adds some attack over here. This piece is a little loose, which could be useful for some tactics in some lines. This actually okay. will be totally fine for black. But uh, there is what's called the fried liver attack here. And it's one of the ones that you know a lot of beginners will walk into. Who names these things? <laughs> uh, so this one, <laughs> it's called the fried liver because after the move, knight takes f7. <laughs> this crazy move, giving up a whole knight. The king itself in this exact line, based on the fact that there's this pin here and there's a queen coming into the attack. The point is you're trying to serve this black king up like fried liver. So you follow it up with queen to f3, which is a double attack. You attack the king. And you attack the knight for a second time. And the only way to save, get out of check and defend your knight is to play this crazy move, king to e6. And this is why it's called fried liver. You give up a whole knight, but you get this huge attack. And then it's all about just attacking this knight as many times as possible. So, you know, moves like knight to c3, and it becomes very difficult for black to defend here. Huh. So... Uh, won't go too much more into it, but I just wanted to point out that that's like a possible line. So if you do, uh, at some point, you want to take a look at it. I mean, most people are going to play knight to f6 here. If at some point you want to bust out a database and kind of look at it, or you just want to explore it to see if people even find the move d5, it's worth considering in some of your games. Okay. I don't know if I remember that, but I'll try to remember it. <laughs> sure, and if not, d3 is totally a fine move. d3 is like the most principled way of playing. And yet has this nice slow approach um, where bishop e7 or bishop to c5 are going to be the main moves. I get the feeling that memorizing opening patterns in chess yeah. is a lot more powerful than it is in Go. Right, because if you know it and they don't, it's just like over. <laughs> yeah, but would you say that's good or bad for a beginner to memorize an opening in your opinion? So you... You don't really need to memorize every single line. So at the very top level, they're memorizing variations and they're going deep and they know like 20 moves of a whole different bunch of different branches. What okay. you kind of want at the beginning is you just want a basic plan. So for example, in this position that we reached, okay, all of this was logical and I castled as well. The There's basically three main things that are going on. Uh, one of them is I'm trying to get your bishop on C4. So you need to have some way of keeping your bishop alive. That's one of the, the main ideas in this position. The other how one you, how, is... How are you saying that you're trying to get it nothing's attacking it? So I'm going to play knight to a5. So for example, if after here at d6, if you don't play a4, if you just play... So most people are playing c3, which I'll also explain. If you play some silly move that doesn't matter, I'm going to play knight to a5. And my idea is I'm simply going to take this bishop. Whether you run away, whether you go here, I can still take it. I'm going to find some way of taking this guy. Because this bishop is so powerful. The bishop on c4 is just such a strong piece. Uh, we've seen all these tactics on f7 all the time with these, the knight and the bishop. That's a horrible arrow. But the knight and the bishop attacking the f-pawn. This is going to keep happening all the time. The bishop is such a good piece. I need to get rid of it somehow if I'm, if I'm able. Okay, so when you say make a plan, you're more of like picking a powerful piece on the board and trying to get rid of it or get it out of there? Correct, yeah. I'm, I'm constantly weighing which pieces are good and which pieces are bad and trying to figure out which pieces I need to trade and which pieces I need to keep on the board. So okay. conversely, this is one of my good pieces because at some point maybe I'll get to play knight g4 and I'll have some pressure on your f-pawn. 
So okay. it's constantly a battle of making sure your pieces are good and they find really, really good squares. So it's not just developing, it's developing while putting a lot of attacks on a single piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very okay. much so. So yeah, if we continue here, so A4, which is totally fine. Another idea worth considering is C3. And now it can get interesting if I play knight to A5. Um, well, because first of all, there's B4. But the typical, there's this funny little running away line. It's maybe even more common. Let me illustrate it too. Let me get my bishop out of the way to illustrate it um, another way. Now, if, let's just say castles. Let's just say D6, C3. Um, now, if I go about, let me just put a couple more moves on the board just for, just for a laugh. If I attack your bishop, uh, what would you play here? I mean, there's only one. There's only one move, right? Mm -hmm. Those, there's two moves, I guess, technically. Uh, maybe I would go bishop d5. Okay, so it's protected by a pawn. Yeah, so here it's actually interesting because um, I, I can just take with my knight, but I don't uh -huh. even think that's the best move because I think if I take with my knight, this guy might end up getting stranded. It takes away one of his squares. But I think I can play one of the moves that I'm actually hoping to play in this kind of position, which is the move c6. The idea is eventually I get to play the move d5 and get you know a push in the center. But I'm also just asking this bishop to go away again. And wherever you go away, I'm going to be able to grab it. You can take back, obviously. But I got rid of uh, a strategically desirable piece. Your bishop was really good, and I was able to win this. So there's a really sneaky way. I bring it up because it's unusual, because it's different, because it hopefully will get you to, you know, think a little bit differently about the game and how you would, would save a piece here. So there okay. is a way of keeping this bishop on the board. I'm obviously, I got hunting it down, I'm hunting it down, but you can escape here. And it has to do with the move C3 that was played a little bit earlier. I mean, I'm pretty sure the AI is telling me to go B5. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's telling you, which is, which is whatever. But it's still good, which when you're using a database... It, the point is, there's nobody telling you why, but if you can yeah. kind of put a story together, it's, I'm trying to hunt down your bishop, how are you going to stop me? It's now a6, yeah, the point is, we're going to run away. And after b5, obviously, we're not going to go to b3, where I'm going to be we're able to capture you. You're going to go to c2. And c2 is very often the square where this bishop's going to go in this kind of opening. It's a very normal square for the bishop. And it looks a little weird at first, maybe, because it's behind all these pawns, but... Part of your plan is to play d4 at some point, possibly after you're going to do... You know, we're going to do a lot of slow maneuvering first, like where you're going to bring all your stuff out and whatever. But if you ever play d4, it gets closer and closer and closer to becoming an active piece. If your knight ever ends up all the way over here on f5, um, and I take it, you know, this bishop will sometimes be able to get back into the game somehow, some way. But c2 is actually a very normal square in these kinds of structures for the bishop to end up. You're just keeping it there, even if it's stuck behind some pawns for now. It's such a strong piece, it'll come back later in the game. Okay. Uh, so what ended up happening in our game is uh, here. Yeah, so again, so I guess the main move here we can see in the database is c3. h3 is also <laughs> an interesting option. Uh, I think h3 is, if you just play this move h3, you're saying, I want to play rook e1, but I don't want to allow this knight to go to g4, which would have saved you <laughs> a little bit of a headache at some point. Oh, I thought you weren't supposed to move those pawns. Yeah, I you're not. You but again, them. it's more important to think about what I'm trying to do and what you're trying to do. And, you know, you're trying to... <laughs> you, you know, so C3 is definitely the most flexible. You don't have to play H3 yet. When your rook is still here, I'm never going to be threatening to go here because your F-pawn's going to be defended enough. But, yeah, and then it's going to give some long, complicated lines. <laughs> There's, like, D5 and D6, and if you really were doing this, you need to know a lot. But, um, but yeah, just the basic plans here were fine here you played a4 and again it's it's very keeping in what you're supposed to be doing c3 is probably the more accurate move just because now if, if we do the same hunt <laughs> you get to escape again you know some sort of hunt like this uh, which i could hunt you down with my a pawn my c pawn whatever uh, would work out you're just going to do the same escape plan and it's just more keeping in with what you're trying to do which is eventually to play in the center but had the right idea so i don't think it's, it's that horribly wrong at all um, and here's where I actually will, I'm going to turn on the computer. Does this, I guess, I'm kind of curious, I'm going to look at your screen to see if that turns it on for you or not. Um, 
But otherwise, I can just sit here and cheat all day long. I know all the answers now. I feel suddenly very strong. But, yes, yeah, so this actually turns out... Was this wrong by me? Wow. You can now play uh, knight to b3. <laughs> and you're actually doing the same thing. The way that I want to get this bishop, you're now hunting down my guy, which is pretty funny. And here it doesn't make any sense at all because you just play here. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. You actually had the chance to do the same kind of thing that I was trying to do to you. So the computer was just telling me. I've been sitting here lecturing night and day here about, you know, how I'm going to hunt down this bishop. But the computer's just laughing at me. It's like, I better make an escape square for my bishop. Do the same thing you just did. And <laughs> that's kind of funny. So it's a very symmetrical position. So it actually makes sense that what is good for me is also good for you. So, <laughs> yeah, you could have had a, a great position here if you <laughs> played knight to b3. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's just one of those things that's coming down to these bishops outside the pawn chain when, you know, they're just so powerful you want to try to get them at whatever cost. Um so that was kind of funny. Um, and then here, it says that you threw it all away. C6 was correct. Um, yeah, here I can play D5, but my move is also good. And I guess now it's time to, you know, put your rook on one of these squares. So there, I've seen a lot of high-level games where, not in this exact position, but in similar positions, you know, top, top, top grandmasters, they do like this, and they make a draw really fast. And then they're like, okay, now we don't have to play anymore. So that does happen. Um quite a lot <laughs> in top level games and then the other way if you're trying to win is to put this rook on this semi awkward square but it defends everything so not too bad why would they want to draw um so when you're playing these top tournaments it's not always about um winning in the end thanks sonia for the bits it's not about winning each game necessarily you think of like the longer tournament structure where most games are going to be draws and they kind of take this into account and maybe they don't want to play this particular opponent, they want to wait and they want to use something against somebody else. Um, but they can kind of draw their way through the tournament and get like plus one or plus two. Sometimes it only takes like one or two wins to win a whole tournament because so many games are draws at the top level. Huh. But yeah, it's just based on like yeah, who they want to play in the whole tournament and they think about the larger picture. But that kind of stuff happens quite a bit. And then sometimes they repeat just one time and then they eventually, like, okay, I'm going to win. I just wanted to see if Black would do something different. So there's a lot of weird stuff that happens in the, the top-level tournaments. But then, okay, yeah, and then here this is a huge mistake. And I assume there's not much more uh, that's worth talking about here. So. so hopefully that gave you a little bit of, of uh, an idea of how to play this opening. Um, I think it would be interesting. Do you want to do, you wanna do one more? chess game either against me or against uh, somebody i'm not sure how game. long you will be streaming i'm gonna go forever i don't i don't really care i don't have a timeline um yeah that's fine because i can go i'm gonna be going for a while too because my wife's playing D, D tonight so sweet <laughs> so yeah my kids are going off to grandma's so <laughs> um all right so just one more and then yes do you want to play me or do you want to play somebody up? else another interesting idea is you playing somebody else your own rating so that we you know maybe you, okay maybe you can win a game and then uh, I guess it makes sense for me to hear you, but you not hear me. I, I guess if that's good for you. And then, yes, and I'll hear what you're saying while you're doing it, and then at the very end, we'll, we'll take yeah, a look so at the game. Yeah, so you can just hit the mute button then. Okay, so I'm going to mute if myself, and then... Hear him, just check out the multi-stream. multi, multi -stream. Sweet. So, yeah. I'm muting now. You go play a game. I'll be watching you, and then we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Uh, am I playing someone in chat, or am I playing a, a right uh, game? Anybody you want. If you want to just jump in the pool, it'll be easy because you'll get somebody random. But if yeah, if somebody in the chat is you want to play, go for it. Uh, I'll just jump in the pool. That way I can play a ranked game, and it'll for sure be my level, I guess. Sweet. All right. Muting myself now. All right. All right. So hopefully he cannot hear me. Okie dokie. And All right. Oh, so I am white. That's convenient, considering I've been done nothing with Sonny White today, I guess. Oh. Uh, and already he goes off E5. Track, so I don't even know what to do. Okay, but he... Uh, so he said knight to f3 would attack the pawn, but since the pawn's not there... I don't know how to attack this. <laughs> it's already on. It's a completely different game, though, already. E5 throw uh, off. I'm going to go here, even though he said not to do this one on the other position because this one blocks the pawn from moving. What? How do I do with this? Wait, wait, wait. That's wrong. That's wrong. I can just do that. All right. He's doing great. All right. All right. I think he's going to win this strong. one. <laughs> I don't know if this uh, was the best best training game. 
But All right, pink. so I want to develop the bishops, and he doesn't have the center, so I'm just going to do t <laughs> Expecting h5, rook h6. Okay, and then that's that's not hanging because there's a queen. So I'm going to go dude because I don't see a reason not to dude. Develop your stuff, that's fine. Okay, so that knight is going is threatening uh, c2, which is defended, h2, Good. which is defended, yep, he's just and sure his stuff is defended. a check at d3, which is defended. Yeah, very good. Yep, just making sure these are both defended. Now, it's defended, but I can also poke it at a3. Yeah, he's just thinking. You can push it back or leave it there, either and way. And then if I go a3, all three of my side squares are protected, so he has to jump back to exactly where he was. a3 is fine. Yep, he just spent some time. He did a good job. He he's a sure. question mark, so maybe, maybe he's not ranked yet. And yeah, notice the provisional rating. He's, this guy's played two games. So. I might be sandbagging, and I don't know it. Okay. Now. See. This makes sense. This makes sense. I think I want to... I was going to go queenside castle, but because my pawn has moved up, I think I'm going to go kingside castle, so I'm going to move this rook out. Yeah, knight f3 is a great move. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Penguin, thank you for the raid. Mine? All right. Thank you very much, Penguin. And that was, uh, that was good for me. All right, so now he's attacking my pawn. But that's defended by my other knight. Oh, and yeah. the way he's been playing, maybe he'll fall for that. So I'm just going to castle so we're having a training lesson. We just gave Clausius here a lesson, and now he's using it to full effect, totally crushing his opponent here in a game. So thanks every piece that's destroyed. moved out has died so far, except for that bishop, not including the pots. Wait, wait, wait! I can trade now. Now I'm up by four, so trading should be good. And I think bishops, yep, think, according yep, to thinking about taking uh, the bishop. Excellent. Last stream, bishops are just slightly better than knights very very slightly so i can trade and since i'm up trades are good for me yeah it's gonna be a great trade he's I'm gonna, gonna trade. win and this will also make his pawns do to do yeah, yeah so the my name is double jonathan dudes. trance i had to do the double dudes and uh yeah i work at the st louis chess club okay and now we're doing um, a lesson and then after he totally wins this game we're gonna also now if he a wants to trade lesson, queens so i'm okay with this that is going to be about how so to play i have no problems so I want to develop something. thinking about something. whether or not he should trade the queens. What do I want to develop? I think I want to move my rook to e1, since that way I can move my pawn up, potentially sacrifice it, and it would also be poking his king. So I want to do that. Okay, so he just yeah, gets the rook in. Seems fine. Lower his volume. Okay. He moved up. You guys can let me know if that's the uh, right one. Which that opens up a square for the knight now. Which is actually pretty interesting. Okay, I can make it even lower if that helps you guys. It might but. be interesting. Maybe it's not. So yeah, probably I would move this queen, bring the other rook in. Uh, trading would also be fine. We'll see what he comes up with. Hmm. Now there's, he said that when you're making a plan, you want to target a special piece. But there's no special piece in the center. So I should target a special piece on his side. So I should target that queen. Uh, his pawn's going to thinking about it. He's thinking about targeting the queen. I can honestly... Yeah, he's a, he's a go player. He's actually very new to chess. So it's... Four. Yeah, it's great to see him winning his, uh, his first little training game here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to move the knight. 
This is like all the chess that, that he's, he's that played so far. And it'll so, protect yeah. the bishop. 30 games, 2 so games, 1 game. And then so. my bishop might be able to poke He's only about 30 games into his career here. Hey, JJ, how's it going? This is an excellent move. Excellent move. So, yeah. Okay. Looks like... Looks like he's so about he to win a lot that. of material and hopefully get a checkmate here very fast. So, this is a very long game, but it could be a very short one. Now, is there any check on the king? No, because I don't have a white bishop. Okay, he's looking for checks. Bishop. I guess he's looking for checks on this so diagonal. Need... He does have some checks. <gasps> Wait. Uh, oh, dang it. I was going to say I could use my knight to go to e7 to poke his queen, to poke his queen and free okay, up that row. Column, I guess. He's thinking about uh, it, but, but then he's, nice he's doing a good job of taking his time and trying so to figure out when things are, are protected or not. The opponent's gone offline, so maybe the opponent's had enough here. As well as the queen, but I don't know how to look at the knight. So yeah, do look at the knight. Mm, it's got a good move. On a white square. It was a good knight move. For the follow. Uh. Wait, I can check the king hey, hey. and force him out. Wait, is that checkmate? So yeah, he thinks it's checkmate. He doesn't see that the queen. Hold on, if I move the knight to c seven, he spotted I it. Take a pawn. He found it. He's in check. Now my queen is blocking that whole row. Yeah, he's doing good. Right. So he can't move the king. So he has to take the knight with the queen, Thanks and Lactos. then I'll get a free queen. Okay, so not checkmate. It's not checkmate. So yeah, he's even figured out that the queen will queen. be able to take. So excellent. He's gonna win some. Win a queen here. If my opponent left the game? <laughs> yeah, maybe the opponent left, though. It says claim victory or call draw. Yeah. Just claim always claim it. Then? You always claim it. Just take that win. Okay, the guy obviously left because he either thinks it's a checkmate or he's losing his stuff. And it seems like, uh, yeah, lesson was, was maybe a big success. Is that what we're taking my away here? My opponent left the game. I just claim victory. Yeah, I won't. I won't turn my audio claim back victory. on for him until he makes his own decision. Boom! Won. He won. All right, let's go back and talk to him. GG, well played. Hey, you GG won. Yeah, I won. You did it. Easy. Excellent you game. Ready? Very easy. Yeah, yeah. You made a lot of a lot of very good decisions in there. So, I do want to just real quick. I'm gonna add this to that study again. And if you want to just have one look at okay. how you crushed this guy, you did. You played an excellent game. So if you play people around your own rating, I guess. You can do very well. He was well, provisional. I think he, was, I think he was at my ranking because he was provisional, and yeah. usually they will do that. So yeah, but in any case, uh, <laughs> if you're if you're looking at the the study, I'm assuming you may have been thrown have off by that first move. People watching. Yeah, the first move threw me off a lot. I didn't know what to do to that. Oh yeah, and we did get a get a raid from uh from Penguin, who's a grandmaster, Andy Tang, oh, oh, no. and uh, yeah, he sent over 300 people over here. So, a lot of people saw this crushing defeat. Do you want to post the multi-stream link, or do you just want to go and continue with the review? I don't have it handy, so I'm just going to keep going. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> he played really well here. They played on the side, <laughs> and yeah, after the rook came here, he spotted it right away. So this actually is great, because it's all about board vision. And what I really liked was the way you kind of went through slowly, and you're like, is this protected, is this protected? And you figured it all out correctly. Um, so yeah, here you did a great job. A lot of people might not even see that you can take that rook. Um, and you played in the center. I almost, I almost didn't see it. I almost didn't see the rook. Yeah. I was like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> but I had just checked on the previous turn what my bishop was doing, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. let's look at that. So I just, that's cool. Yeah. And, and then he moved his rook onto it, and I was like, well, <laughs> Right, and that's what it's all about. It's just kind of getting to know of, like, where you're pieces are going to go because at some point it'll be so natural that this bishop is always looking at the a6 square but it just at the beginning it's just about looking around so yeah it looks like you're using your time and you're kind of like okay where's my knight my knight is controlling what squares and you're kind of having a look around and yeah it led you to find a lot of very good moves and yeah taking my pawn is probably wrong but uh yeah again here you can make a lot of good moves you just developed a piece um probably not the one i would but as long as you're developing your pieces everything is going to be fine here oh then is the bishop not good um, it's probably not the most accurate move, I assume. I can turn the engine on, but I'm assuming it's either like d5 or knight f3. Probably d5 is like the strongest move. But yeah, oh, d5 and knight f3. 
Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter much. Um, so you are just winning here because you're up material, and your opponent has absolutely nothing for it, and their pawn structure is ruined. So like you're just you should just be able to win if you play like an engine from here. <laughs> so that's the good news. But as long as you develop your pieces logically, like nothing horribly wrong with it. It's not like that changes anything. And then here is an example we were kind of talking about when it is and isn't a good idea to move pieces twice in the opening. Here's a bad example. Your opponent shouldn't be moving this knight. He's, you know, not making any attempt to get this king castled and safe. And that's going to be a huge problem because you already control the center. <laughs> and you're going to be able to get your stuff out and castle very quickly. So here's yeah, an example of it. That when I moved my pawn here, I was like, yeah. I can maybe can move his piece twice. And that should be good for me. Right. And so, yeah, it's even a question. I'm not... I actually wonder if the computer would even play A3 or if it's just, like, the knight actually isn't doing anything. And I kind of liked in the game you were going through, you're like, okay, so C2, that's covered by the queen. Okay, D3, that's covered by, like, a pawn and a queen. And, you know, that was pretty good. And then you, you decided on A3, which can't be too wrong. And you developed your knight. Again, great. As long as you're developing stuff. And then a shocking move. Your opponent gave away another piece. <laughs> so, excellent. You took it back. Um, I think he and, probably doesn't see knights. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're very tricky. Yeah, he's just, he's also struggling with what is defended by what. He just sees that the thing is attacked. You know, hey, I can draw, grab a pawn, and then it's just kind of surprised when you're able to take it back. Okay, and then he, then you just castle. This is fantastic. Um, and his big plan was bishop to b7 to c6. And you just grabbed it, which is excellent. This was a great move. Um, and then after this capture, um, I was kind of wondering... I'm assuming, okay, I thought you were just going to trade queens because that's absolutely the simplest. Another idea is, if it were me, I'd be trying to attack this guy, and I'd just move my queen somewhere. Just anywhere simple. E2, or, you know, you could probably go out anywhere that's nice and safe. And then with the idea of putting a rook on the D file to attack the queen, just keeping the queens on the board. Um, sorry, sometimes if I hit a square in the center, the arrows go away. But, yeah, just by keeping the queens on the board might have also been just a good way to try to check them quickly, but it totally worked out during the game. Because um, here you played a great move. I thought this was a really, really excellent move. You played knight to d5, which is just fantastic. This is just a great move. You're just you're threatening knight takes c7, and there's really nothing that he's going to be able to do about it. So. Yeah. I didn't think it was that good, and then I saw that maybe I could mm -hmm. uh, get that, that the bishop was protecting c7, mm -hmm. and so having a knight there would actually be really nice. Yeah, so, so I, that was my feeling anyway. Yeah. It's a lot like how in all the other games, the art practice games, it was always this f-pawn. Conversely, on the queen side, the same sort of thing with this c-pawn. You can kind of notice the symmetry. It's three squares from either side. These pawns, they get attacked by knights and bishops all the time. So instead of going after the f-pawn here, we're going after the c-pawn. So this okay. ends up being <laughs> similar and equally devastating. Like having the bishops on the corners, like f4 and c4, are really good? Yes. So yeah, when the knights, they coordinate. If you can coordinate a knight and a bishop, so usually if there's a, you know knights and stuff going here, this is going to be very strong. And the corollary is on the queen side when you have a knight and a bishop lined up on those c pawns. Really good stuff is going to happen. So those are one of the those are the two weaknesses that early on are going to be the the ways that you win lots of games. Like lots and lots and lots of games are going to be won because the knights and bishops just coordinate against either the c or the f pawns. So hey, that was fantastic. You won that game and you played great. You actually, I mean, I can't really criticize any move too much. Those you played a, a very very good game. You should be happy with that one. Yeah. Cool, I felt so much better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> felt better than playing me. <laughs> I was like, hey, look, I'm actually getting pieces. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so hopefully you do continue and you just keep playing and you play people your own rating and, and all of that. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting. I've also been, like, doing uh, the learn practice section on this site. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'm at, I've done, like, uh, three sections of checkmate problems. And oh, I'm awesome. Working my way, I'm just working my way down the page, and I figured if I just do all the problems on the page, I could probably get to, like, maybe 1,300 or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so if you're doing puzzles every day and you're playing every day, that's definitely going to be uh, a... Not every day, unfortunately. <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> other stuff that I have to do every day. So gotcha. I haven't been able to play chess every day, but I mostly can do chess on the weekends and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but this weekend has been really slow because it's also our anniversary and everything. Ah. So, I, well, congratulations! Uh, how many how many years has it been? This week. But it was definitely fun. I did play uh, a, a couple games a few a few days ago, or a couple days ago when I had the other. Uh, I did uh, invite someone uh, for the collaboration um, mm -hmm. on Thursday, I believe it was. 
uh, and that was CL Smith 15. Yeah, and I think he's been here in the chat too this whole time. So yeah, seems like gotcha. he's, um, he's still hanging around helping you yeah, out. Yeah, he's been. Uh, yeah, he helped me out uh, then and taught me some stuff and some, and then I uh, played like a game and then came here and now I played some more. And so I'm getting a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of information. Right. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see uh, another rank or two here soon. I don't know how fast eleven you improve at the eleven hundreds. Honestly. Right. I mean, um, you're I improving did. fast, so yeah. If you just keep, if you stick with it, I do think that you'll improve fast because I think you have the right mindset for it. I think just kind of awesome. the way you go through it slowly, you just don't have enough practice at it, which you can only get by yeah, I think by I'm doing really it. Slow. I've been watching, uh, I've been watching you guys play, and you're playing like one minute, and I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But no, this is perfect practice. This seems like the perfect time control for you. I would keep doing this to improve because. You're getting to the right answer, and that's kind of how it is. Like, if you haven't solved these kinds of puzzles over and over and over again, it's just you're getting to all the right answers. You found all the right moves. You know, it just takes you a little longer because you just don't have the experience yet. But yeah, when you take your time, you are finding all the right moves, which is a great sign. One thing I'm curious about is at the higher levels. So mm -hmm. I'm finding it interesting because Go and Chess have two different clock types, and I'm also finding the way we handle clocks is different. The more I'm like doing these collaboration streams, yeah. the more I've uh, realized this. But for Go, we use a Yomi system, which means we have 30 seconds overtime for every single move. Okay. And as long as we play a move within that 30 seconds, we don't lose a period. Uh, and we have five periods, so we can go over 30 seconds five times. But as long as we don't go over 30 seconds, we have an infinite amount of 30 seconds. Okay, when it's it like a time extension in poker? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure about poker. That's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't played a time setting with poker, but it's the Bio Yomi system. But the, the reason I mention it is because in Go, it's all about using as much time as you can and maximizing the time you have to gather information for a position. Yeah. But in chess, you don't have an infinite amount of time like we do because every single move you get another 30 seconds. On here, you every single move you get maybe 10 seconds or 5 seconds or none. Right. Uh, so you're about getting a good move quickly instead of getting the amount of, uh, maximum amount of information you can on this turn. And I'm wondering at the high levels, how do you think, how do you think uh, that my approach is going to be affected by that? Uh, because I have, I like, I take the think through it process, mm -hmm. but it's probably not good for the, the way the clock works in chess. It's probably more about, I need to be able to train my eyes to see it as fast as I can, which, uh, what is your opinion on? So, I mean, once you, when you're playing like real standard games, they're going to be like 90 minutes with a 30 second increment. They can be even longer. They can be a little bit shorter, but they're definitely going to be, you know, around the whole game is going to take about four to six hours. Um, so definitely when you get to like the real high level though, too, <laughs> even then with those time controls, it is still about the stronger player. Like both players might eventually get to like the right answer in every position and kind of find the best moves. But the stronger players will be able to put their opponents under more pressure and just kind of force them to use more time. And then you hope that they kind of collapse at the end. Um, but in chess, yeah, you really do get a long time because you also always get an increment, at least when you're playing like the highest level games. They're always going to get at least like 30 seconds added to their clock. So here, I mean, I guess I, I don't really remember if you were using I guess you were using an increment because your opponent has a lot of time at the end of this game. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so the settings that we're playing on the chess isn't like the settings that are used in like competitive play or anything. Uh, they're much shorter. This would be like a rapid game, whereas like a classical long game would need to be like 75 minutes or something with a oh. big increment. Okay, okay. So my approach actually, my my understanding is actually not correct. It's just how it, it's how I'm seeing it on streams, but that's actually not what it actually right. is. Right, once you, yeah, these the people you're watching on streams, like these title players and everybody else, they've already like, this is boringly slow because they don't need that much time to get to the, the right conclusion. And they like kind of the thrill, like the point of blitz is you can kind of get where you're mixing into, we need to use intuition to solve a lot of things rather than slowing down and calculating. So for that reason, it's not as good for training. If you're trying to, you know, find perfect moves in every position, it's, it's incorporating a lot more of the entertainment value and using intuition. Gotcha. Okay, so that's that's why they're doing it on stream because it's just more right. entertaining and stuff. Not right. Because... Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're gonna get a lot more games okay. in, and there's gonna be a lot more mistakes, and there's gonna be a lot of like just little micro decisions that need to be made without fully coming to the right decision about certain openings, and you know. Okay. 
John but yeah, stick with this. <laughs> Long story short, stick with what you're doing. This is it's going to be the best way for you to keep training.